Okay. Um, Calc 3 is currently two days a week, but I think it's going to go to like uh, every day um, next, no, next no, semester, I think. So. No. Because it's not going to be FCC anymore, it's just going to be regular Calc 3. Okay. So, I'm going to sketch my axes here um, a little bit special just because I kind of, you know, know already what this graph is going to look like. So, maybe you already do too. So, we'll try and connect some of this information about the graph of sine of x with what we already know from the unit circle. Okay? For example, sine, right, we, we evaluate sine at an angle, right? So all these x's, all these x's that we're going to plug into sine are going to be like angles in a sense. Y will be like the ratios, right? <clears throat> so thinking back to our practice with sine in the unit circle, Okay, what was the greatest value that sine would ever be that we saw in the unit circle? What was the highest that sine could be? One. One, right? And so it would make sense then that on our graph, the highest y value we're going to get to is probably going to be one as well. <clears throat> Likewise, what is the lowest value that sine ever, you know, kind of attained? Negative one. And so it makes sense <laughs> here on our graph that the lowest that our graph will be is negative one as well. So the range here is negative one to one. <clears throat> Right. Um, now, also, right when we talked about sine of x, we talked. We always would refer to sine of x and evaluate it in a specific interval, right? From zero to what? Well, three sixty, or in radians, two pi, right? And so, right, we're gonna then again for our x values here, we'll limit ourselves between zero. And I'm just gonna put two pi out to like here. We'll say, okay. <clears throat> And then we also kind of found some like intermediate points, some in-between points. So for example, like the halfway point pi, and maybe like the quarter points pi over two, and like three pi over two as well. <clears throat> okay. And then what we're gonna do is very similar to what you guys did way back, you know, in um, algebra one, maybe even algebra two and stuff like that, or even earlier maybe when you learned how to graph things. We're going to plug in some of these x values and just see what sign gives us as a y value and then plot those points, right? So for example here, at 0, right, where we're going to start, what is sine of 0? Zero. 0, right? So we have a point, 0, 0. Okay. At pi over 2, what is sine of pi over 2? 1. Okay. What is sine of pi? 0. And just using the unit circle, right? What we know about the unit circle there. What's sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. <clears throat> and what's sine of 2 pi? <coughs> 0. Okay? And so what we get, if we connect these dots here, okay, is this kind of shape, all right? We might call this a what? A wave, a wave, a squiggly, yeah, right, a wave. It is a wave, okay, it is a wave, okay? Um, and just like, you know, waves in uh, science and stuff, you can talk about the amplitude of the wave. So, for example, what's the amplitude of this wave? One, okay, right, from the center, it's height, it's one from the center, right? It's a height of one from the center there, okay? Um, waves also tend to repeat, right? And, in fact, this would repeat if we kept going here. So, for example, if, um, well, what's the, what's the length of this wave? Two pi. two pi, right? It starts at zero, goes to two pi. So the length is two pi. And so if I wanted to go another full wavelength, how far out should I go? Four pi, right? Out to four pi. And we'll do the same thing. Find, you know, like the quarter point, so like three pi there, and then find the, you know, or sorry, find the halfway point and the quarter points. And we can kind of use just our pattern there to extend things. Okay, so at 5 pi over 2 will be at 1, 3 pi at 0, 7 pi over 2 at negative 1, 4 pi back at 0, and so it looks something like this. <clears throat> right, and of course we can keep going, right? It would just continue on forever and ever. Yeah, not a bad idea too. I'm going to put an arrows there to show that it does extend forever. Okay. 
forever, ever. All right. So the domain for this function would be what? All real numbers. Yeah, all real numbers. Okay, you can take the sign of any number. Okay, any real number. Okay, and again, I'll kind of divide this up here so you can see. So there's there's one. One full period. Another one right there. Okay, questions on side of x? Okay, if you really wanted to, you could even get down to the nitty gritty here. We could have done like pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and you would have gotten, you know, that little curve there too. But we're not going to do that because it takes too much time. Not too much time, it's just it's more than we need to worry about. All right, now let's try cosine x. Okay? And I'm going to graph cosine x um, in such a way that it'll be easy for us to compare with sine of x. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to try and make sure that the y-axis from the sine graph lines up with the y-axis from my cosine graph or more or less lines up. It's so like they're right below each other kind of thing, you know. And then I'll also try and draw my x and y-axis to be about the same size. <clears throat> I'm even going to try and locate, for example, 2 pi here. I'm going to try and locate 2 pi to be just below the other 2 pi. And same thing with pi, pi over 2. Yeah, just for comparison's sake, because we use sine and cosine together like peanut butter and jelly, you know, so maybe, maybe we'll be able to easily to compare them. Uh, uh, it's, it's a metaphor. That's right. I'm an artiste. All right, so we'll do the same exact thing we did for sine. We're just going to plug these numbers in. So what's cosine of 0? 1. Okay. What's cosine pi over 2? 0. Okay, cosine of pi? Negative 1. Cosine 3 pi... <laughs> Cosine 3 pi over 2, Zero. cosine 2 pi, one. 1. All right, so now we connect these dots. That's a big OK. So yeah, we see some similarities here, right? It looks like cosine will be what kind of shape? A wave as well, right? But not quite the same wave or like, Kind of the same way, but what's 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 off here? What's different about cosine than sine, maybe? So yeah, shift. Yes, yes, a horizontal shift. Can you say how much of a horizontal shift? Yeah, pi halves. One one tick mark, but each tick mark here is a pi over half in length. So yes, it is off by one tick mark, right? So for example, here here's the peak, right? If the cosine wave is at zero. Here the peak of the sine wave is at pi over 2. So if you shift the cosine wave right pi over 2, you'll end up with the sine wave. Or if you shift the sine wave left pi over 2, then you'll end up with the cosine wave, right? So these are the same kind of waves here. They are just are the same <coughs> shapes. They're just shifts, you know, horizontal shift of pi over 2. Or a coterminal angle to pi over 2. And so we could continue on if we wanted to, and then say, okay, well then 5 pi over 2, right, um, 3 pi. Um, 7 pi over 2, and then 4 pi. So I could do a, I can do like another period here if I wanted to say, okay, well, there's 0, there's negative 1, there's 0, there's 1. Like that. Okay. And again, you can see the difference, though. Okay. So there's cosine of x. And of course, we expect that to go on forever here, to the left and to the right. Okay, we're not going to get to tangent today. Tangent's going to come next week. Okay, so you won't have to worry about tangent for your quiz. We're going to focus just on sine and cosine. But today, we're going to then take these sine and cosines, and we're going to do two transformations. 
Um, and then tomorrow we'll do two additional transformations, and then that will kind of cover all of our sine and cosine stuff. And then Friday will be quiz. I think Friday we'll start looking at tangent too. Okay, so let's transform these a little bit. All right, so for example here, let's talk about y equals 2 cosine x now. Now, after having gone through Algebra 2, okay, transformations will probably like beat into you, right? I mean, like you guys transformed every single function that you ever came across, right? You learn a new function, you transform it, all right? So what happens when we throw a coefficient here in front of our parent function cosine x? What does that typically do? What kind of transformation does that result in? <coughs> a stretch. What kind of stretch? Vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. That's right. So it's going to go. So, right. So now our amplitude, instead of being 1, we're going to expect our amplitude to be what? 2. Exactly right. And so rather than our highest high being 1, now our highest high is going to be 2. Highest height. Right? And our lowest low will now be negative 2. Something like, like maybe right here. Okay? So at 0, 2 cosine 0 is now going to be 2. What about at 0, though? If you stretch 0 by a factor of 2, where are you going to be still? That's 0, right? Because twice 0 is still 0, so we're going to just still be at a 0 there. But then at the pi, which is negative 1, now it's going to be negative 2. And then 3 pi over 2 back to 0, 2 oh, pi back to two. Say again? I put it back on the same one just to make it kind of for comparison's sake again, and rather than having to redraw everything. Okay, and we can keep going here. So the period length did not change, right? This still repeats every 0 to 2 pi, right? You can see peak to peak, 0 to 2 pi, peak to peak, 2 pi to 4 pi, valley pi to 3 pi, pi to 3 pi, that's a distance of 2 pi still, right? So the period length, okay, it repeats itself every 2 pi. All right? <coughs> Excuse me. Question? Yep. Hmm? Okie dokie. <coughs> 2 sine will result in something very similar, right? 2 sine would also result in a similar thing here. And so what is this that we're talking about? Well, it's, it's amplitude. I already, we've already brought up the word here, right? Another way to describe it here would be amplitude. Excuse me. Oops, why'd I put a B there? Sorry, I might have put an A. So A times sine X or A times cosine X? <coughs> the amplitude is a measurement of the height of your wave. And so as a result, it should never be negative. You should never describe the amplitude as being negative. Ms. Wimmeyer, though, couldn't we have, you know, like negative one half in front of a sign? Absolutely we could. But if you're going to describe the amplitude, you should describe, even if there's a negative one half in front of the sign, you describe the amplitude as being one half, okay? So the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of A. Okay, it's always positive is the amplitude. So the question is, so then what does that negative mean? If you have a negative, you know, one half in front of your sign, well, what does it mean when you, when you throw a negative in front of your function? What does that do? What kind of transformation is that? Shrink. Not a shrink. So a one half would make it shrink, but the negative doesn't make it shrink. Oh, it's a reflection over the x-axis, right. So if you had a negative a value, it would be a reflection, but that doesn't affect the amplitude, right? And the amplitude would still be the height, which is still be, you know, if it's negative one half, then the amplitude would be positive one half, okay, kind of thing. So just keep that in mind, okay? The number in front can stretch or shrink vertically. It can flip it, you know, reflect it vertically or, or reflect over the x-axis kind of thing. But the amplitude is just the absolute value of that lead coefficient there, or the number in front of your sine or cosine, okay? 
All right, so that's, that's one kind of transformation, the vertical stretch. The other transformation I want to talk about, and I think I might be able to fit it here. Let's see. Can I fit this? Eh, maybe not. I'll go to another page. <coughs> the other transformation that I want us to be looking at here today is a horizontal stretch or shrink. Okay. Okay, so we're going to look at adjusting the period now of our sine or cosine. But in other words, a horizontal stretch or shrink. Okay. So when you see a number in front of your x inside the trig function like this, like a b, the b there in both of those cases, those indicate horizontal stretches or shrinks. Okay. So how do we account for those? Well, what's the typical period for sine or cosine? That is like, what, what do we normally start at? What do we normally end at for sine or cosine? 0 and 2 pi, right? So we'll put that bx between our typical kind of like initial, you know, period, we'll say, 0 to 2 pi. <clears throat> okay. To then get our new period, all you have to do is solve for x here. So in this compound inequality, what should we do to get x by itself? What mathematically should we do here to get the x by itself? Divide both sides by b. So we end up with, well, 0 divided by b is going to be 0. 2 pi over b is 2 pi over b. Okay. So if b is greater than 1, if b is greater than 1, you're going to get a horizontal shrink. Right? If b is like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, you're going to have 2 pi over 7, for example, that shrinks your period. Right? If b is less than 1 but greater than 0, then you're going to have a period stretch. Right? So if b is like 1 half, you'll be divided by 1 half, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So it's going to double your period length. So, for example, y equals sine of x over 2, which is the same thing as right, y equals sine of 1 half x. <clears throat> And we'll compare that versus y equals the sine of x. Just to kind of get an example of this. Okay. And to do this, I'm actually going to, I'm going to make a little table here first. And then we'll graph these. All right, so for the x values here, we'll use the 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi's. I'm sorry, yep. Versus VS, we're comparing them. Yes, go ahead, King. Okay. Yes, what we're doing here is we're going to compare the parent function sine of x to the function sine of x over 2. Okay. We're going to look here. It's going to result in a period, you know, um, stretch or shrink here, a horizontal stretch or shrink. And how do I solve for this? Right. So we're going to plug in some x values here. So 
Sine of zero, right, that's easy, it's zero. Sine of pi is one, sine of pi, or sorry, pi, sorry. Sine of pi over two is one, sine of pi is back to zero. Sine of three pi over two is negative one, sine of two pi is back to zero there, okay? So you first divide your x by two, then you evaluate sine of it, right? It's sine of x over two. All right, so now we're going to plug in. Now let's try sine of x over 2 and evaluate that. So let's plug 0 in here for x. Well, we're going to do 0 divided by 2, which is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Okay, let's plug in pi over 2. Pi over 2 divided by 2 pi over 2 divided by 2. Not 2 pi over 2. It's pi, it's pi fourths. Pi fourths, right? Instead of dividing by 2, think about multiplying by 1 half. What would be pi over 2 times 1 half? Pi over 4, right? And so this is a value. When we plug pi over 2 in, it ends up really being pi over 4 because we're dividing by 2. So we take the sine of pi over 4, which is, what is sine of pi over 4? Root 2 over 2, or approximately 0 0.7 as a decimal. Um, well, that's what we're evaluating, but the, but the final answer here, the value of sine at pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2 or 0.7. There. That's why we put the, zero, the root 2 over 2 or 0.7. So let's plug in pi. Okay, pi divided by 2, pi over 2, what's sine of pi over 2? Um. 1, that's right, it's 1, it's 1, it's 1. Okay, let's do 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 divided by 2. 3 pi over 4. What's sine of 3 pi over 4? Nope. Sine of 3 pi over 4? 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2, yeah. Which is, again, approximately 0 0.7. Plug in 2 pi. 2 pi divided by 2? Pi, sine of pi? Zero. Sign of pi is zero. Okay? So now you can kind of see the stretch already happening. Here's our sine of x. Okay? At zero, they're zero, they're both zero. But then sine of x is one at pi over two. It takes sine of x over two to be one another step, right? The next another pi over two away. So you can see it like stretches out there, right? There's zero, zero, there's one, one. And then at pi, sine of x is zero. But sine of x over 2 doesn't get 0 until 2 pi. So you can see here it goes, you know, so here the same. Here they're one, off by one kind of step here. Here they're off by two steps. So again, that's just kind of stretched out. You can see that stretch. Let's graph it and see what's going on here. So let's get this graph here. I'm going to just go from 0 to 2 pi using the pi over 2, the pi, the 3 pi over 2, and the 2 pi, right? Have fun at Boonsboro. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's graph regular old sine. So we can then compare it to sine of x over 2. So sine at 0 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, sine of pi is 0, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, sine of 2 pi is 0. Okay, so there's sine, sine of x. Okay, I'm going to graph sine of x over 2 in red. So, 
at 0, still 0. At pi over 2, though, we're at 0.7. So pi over 2, 0.7, well, that's kind of close to 0.75. So it's just going to be like a little bit less than 3 fourths. Something like right there, maybe. At pi, we're at 1. At 3 pi over 2, back to that 0.7. So I'm going to be roughly the same height there. And then at 2 pi, we're at 0. So we're going to look like this. At pi, we're at 1. Mm -hmm. For a sine of x over 2. So you can see the stretch, right? You can see this initial part of the sine wave right here from 0 to pi. Well, for sine of x over 2, that gets stretched out not from 0 to pi, but from 0 to 2 pi, right? It gets stretched out. And so if we wanted to actually finish a full wave of sine of x over 2, we have to go all the way out to what? 4 pi. 4 pi, 4 pi right? So we have to like double. <coughs> and so sure enough, that's what we're going to do here. So let's see here. Um, 3 pi will be at the negative 1. Like that. <coughs> and of course, you can continue here. Okay, so in the time that we can get one full wave of sine of x over 2, we can have two waves of sine of x, okay, because of the, the period stretch there for sine of x over 2. Okay, so the period of sine of x over 2 is 0 to 4 pi, or the length is a length of 4 pi, right? It repeats every 4 pi <coughs> for sine of x over 2. All right, questions on any of that? So that's all I've got for you. I'll get you guys started here on your assignment then in the book. Okay, it'll be page 326. Numbers 5 to 13, 27, 31, 41, 43, 47, 87. On. Okay? So there's your assignments. So go ahead and get started on that. All right, if you need a book, remember there's the online book on the Google Classroom. There's a few books floating around here in the room somewhere, so you can take a look at those. Too. Okay, I'm going to get this video going here, too, or upload, I guess. Thank you, Lindsay. How did those um, practice free responses go? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. He does.